Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Design. So I'm a longtime user of ProPresenter and my goal here on this channel is simple, to be a resource to help teams and individuals like yourselves to do church and event production with excellence. So in this video, we're gonna go back to the basics in ProPresenter. This might be your very first introduction to ProPresenter as a worship presentation software. So welcome, I'm glad you're here. I think there's gonna be a lot of great value in this video that you're gonna really learn something on how to set up a new song in ProPresenter. So we're gonna go back to the basics, the basics of displaying song lyrics on slides. But first we need to import songs into ProPresenter. Either way, I have some new techniques that are sure to help you in this process. In the past, I've talked about the manual way to import lyrics, but there is a better way. A better way to import new songs into ProPresenter 7. So if you're still importing songs manually like I had been doing and like I've showed you how to do in the past, stop doing that and go ahead and see if your church pays for a service called Song Select. If you don't have song select, that this is fine. You can do all that we're gonna do in this video without song select. You're just gonna have to follow a couple of extra steps that you're gonna have to do manually. So if you find that you do have access to song select and you aren't utilizing it, this is a good day for you. With that being said, I wanna clarify, a song select subscription is not at all required to gain benefit from this video, but you're definitely gonna love it. So like I said, the most basic functionality of ProPresenter is presenting songs on slides. For way too long, I used the tactic of going to Google and locating song lyrics through, I like azlyrics.com is my preferred website. Then I would highlight and copy, Command C, those lyrics. This stores them in the computer's clipboard. Now in ProPresenter 7, go to File, Import, Text from Clipboard. On this pop-up that comes up, select your preferred line break settings. Basically, how many lines or paragraphs should ProPresenter 7 break the lyrics into, the text into? So we're gonna come back to this in a minute, but don't click import, but select edit. Now the text is brought into a version of the reflow editor, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But here you can easily turn it into slides using option enter to split your text into multiple slides. That is the process of importing songs manually. It's okay if that is your process, but I just want you to know that there is a better way. So let's click the magnifying glass to search through the song library. The left is the ProPresenter 7 library, and beside that you're gonna see two more tabs. The middle one, the next one over, is to search the song select database. And the next one to the right is the multi-tracks integration, because multi-tracks has their own version of this system. So click the song select tab, then search via name for the desired song. Or I recently learned that you can search by song number, which is pretty useful if you're looking up a hymn. So when you find the song that you want, select import, and this time for sure select line break. I'm gonna turn mine into two lines per slide. That's really what I do. I think that's kind of a standard thing. So I'm gonna select my two, and then again, don't hit import, but hit select. And if you're importing songs manually, I suggest breaking slides into single paragraphs because ideally paragraphs contain entire verses, choruses, bridges of the song. And I wanna show you a way to add groups to these verses, choruses, and bridges so that you can better organize them later on. So now back to our song select import, we see that some things are a little different. The song slides imported from song select have been assigned these groups. Slide groups break a song into slide sections such as chorus, bridge, verse, as I mentioned. I wanna create a blank slide as the first slide of the song and then right click on that slide, select group, then from the list, assign this slide the grouping of intro. This first slide will be free of lyrics and would be where we add our motion backgrounds. So now after the last slide in the song, we're gonna create two new slides and the very last slide is going to be regrouped as outro and the second to last slide is gonna be regrouped as interlude. So now we can go through and make changes to the lyric slides. In the top right, be sure to select the theme that you intend to use with the song. This helps ensure that the formatting is correct when we break lyrics into multiple slides. So as I go through the song, use option plus enter, option enter on my Mac, and it's similar on PC, to break your lyrics into multiple slides. So as we get into breaking these lyrics into slides, we're gonna get into formatting, and formatting is very important to me. So let me show you some stuff that's gonna help you to have some incredible formatting in your lyric slides. So our first example is gonna be two lines per slide. It's so important to keep things simple. I love having two lines of lyrics per slide. When you go from having two lines 
it looks clean and easy to read. Then you go into four, then you go into six, and it's like, what are you even doing? I like to tell people, and we can make, I should make a whole video on this topic, but I like to tell people that when an audience member is looking at the screen, right, the goal of worship is not to look at the screen. But if there's six lines of text and they glance away, when they come back, they're going to have to find their space in the line again. So keeping it to two means that within the next few seconds, we're going to have a new slide so they can always start at the beginning of the new slide. I just want to jump in here and say that I have a lot of confidence that the same operator that gets behind running slides with two lines per slide is going to get behind running slides with six lines per slide. Speaking from experience, when I'm running lyrics, the more lines, the more time I have to get distracted. One helpful hint that you could definitely share with your team, something I do is when I go to a new slide, I look at the last line of the slide. In this case, hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. So I'm keeping those words in my head, don't fear no evil, and I'm listening for that. And when I hear that, I know, hey, it's time to jump to the next slide. My second idea is utilizing blank slides. This is so important. Back in the day, my grandma was like, I love my hymn book because I know the notes. I know what's coming next. I can tell what's going on. I think that there is a part of putting lyrics on a screen that is not just putting lyrics on a screen, but it's an art. Blank slides turn it into an art. If you want the audience to go straight into seeing the next line, then don't use a blank slide. If you wanna tell the audience there's a gap here, even if it's just a few seconds, if it's a big enough gap to not go straight in to the next slide, you need a blank slide. So to go from this slide to this slide to this slide, but we're not actually gonna start singing this verse two for multiple seconds, I think that's not ideal. The next important one to note is watching your lines. This is more about the formatting of text, which is kind of what we're talking about here. That is who you are. That is who you are. That was two separate things. That wasn't a run together sentence. So we want to format it like this. So often I see lyrics formatted like this when they should be formatted like this. It's not ideal, but it happens. Okay, let's avoid bad fonts. You ever see a piece of bad advertising and you're just like, why do these people use these terrible fonts? I can't see it. Well, it's the same in worship. We don't want to use bad fonts. It might look cool, but it's so hard for the audience to understand the font. And I'm not just talking about cursive. <laughs> okay, my last quick idea is to try all caps. If you have a song and this is what it looks like and then you go into make it all caps, I think it makes it so much easier to read and this isn't just me, there's a lot of people doing all caps. It's not yelling when it's on the slide. Once the text is formatted correctly, go ahead and set the name of the song and any other licensing information at the top of the editor. You might have noticed that when we imported our song from Song Select, there is only a single verse, chorus, bridge. Whereas if you import a song from online, typically the songs online are in order of the original recording, which makes it so much easier to have the slides ready to go in the right order. I fought the use of some of these techniques for a long time because I didn't understand the value of some of the available features in ProPresenter. And one of those features is the Arrangements tab, which is right there. The Arrangements tab is one of the best features of ProPresenter. In the song that we just imported, go ahead and open the Arrangements by clicking the Arrangements button at the top. All of the song groups that were created for us or that we created are gonna show up here. On the left side where it says Master, we can click and then create a new arrangement. This is where you can create multiple arrangement versions of this song. I'm just gonna name my new arrangement default. Now, for the three of you who have not already guessed what is about to happen, we can now drag and drop to reorder the slide groups in our new arrangement. This is limited to slides. We can't change slide elements per song arrangement, for example. You can't add song chords in a different key per arrangement. When I set up songs for events, I always ask the worship team for the arrangements order so that I can set them up in advance. Yes, we can click around if necessary, but it's best to keep things in linear order as much as possible, especially since the next slide on the stage display won't be correct if we jump around a lot. So once you have that information, drag and drop the groups from the top into the bottom section and create the desired arrangement. So on this song, default arrangement, I'm going to add like eight bridges. And after I do all that work, I'm of course gonna realize that I need to adjust the formatting of one of the bridges. Well, it's safe to say that my voice sounds nothing like me in the studio. 
So I want to clarify a couple of things. So on this song, we've got three bridges, ultimately bridge one, bridge two, and bridge three. It's okay to call a chorus, for example, a chorus, but if you have multiple choruses, I would recommend doing a group, do it, make the first one chorus one instead of just regular chorus. So for example, on this one here, I'm going to call, rename this one. So I'm going to select the first slide of the group, and I'm going to change this to group or bridge two, because this is bridge one, this is two, this is three. Um, let's find the next one. This looks like bridge one, so I'm going to change it from bridge to bridge one. And now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find bridge three, group, bridge three. Perfect. So in this song, I've added one bridge two, a ton of bridge ones, and then one bridge three. So the point is, is that the beauty of being able to edit these slides is if you go to the editor, and now I only see my three bridges, my bridge one, my bridge two, and my bridge three. So if you make a change to bridge one, that's the one that has a ton of them. Let's just like type in some extra text here. That's perfect. So if I hit go back to show, so you see it's going to all the bridge ones, it's going to update at the exact same time. So you can see Hello World is in all of the bridge ones. So if I did the similar thing to bridge two or bridge three, it would all be in there. So let's try the reflow editor because you're going to notice that in the reflow editor, it shows us all of the bridge ones that are in the arrangements that are set up in the arrangements. So if I just delete this text and I say, and I type in my Wi Fi password, perfect, there's my Wi Fi password. And I go back to show, it's going to update all of the bridge one slides with my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> so Reflow shows you all the slot, all the groups, all the arrangements, but it updates everything when you update one of the slides. The editor also updates all of the arrangements groups when you update one of the slides, but it only shows you a single copy, which is really cool. So I think that's a really good distinguishment to add into this video, a couple of really important pieces of content. I'm gonna get rid of all these extra bridges because I'm pretty sure we're not singing that many. So if you don't have song select, then I mentioned that there's a couple of things you're gonna have to do manually. Let's go back to the browser and grab some lyrics. So I didn't realize this until I started editing this video. I love making content like this because it also teaches me. So. I copied lyrics, the lyrics here from uh, genius.com and now over back in ProPresenter, go to file, import, the normal route, text from clipboard. Uh, we're gonna make this paragraph break, one group, and hit edit. So notice how on the left side here, a lot of my text came in as groups. So you see it missed this post chorus and there's a bunch of some extra stuff in here, but this post chorus is in here. So I didn't realize this, but if you put my hypothesis is that if you put post-chorus, pre-chorus, bridge in parentheses like this, that ProPresenter will identify that and turn it into a group. So we're gonna test that. I'm gonna go over to, I made a note file here and I've got all my lyrics in here. I'm just gonna Command A on my Mac. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, right click on a random slide, go to group, and we have a pre-chorus, we don't have post-chorus. Let's try pre-chorus. So I'm gonna go over to the notes here and I'm gonna change this to pre. And I'm gonna get rid of that one there. So there's still another post course down here, but I wanna command edit this again, command C to copy it, go to file, import, text and clipboard, because I wanna know, does it, pat, does it put that in a group? And the answer is yes. So it put it in a group because it found a group with that name. So if you pull from a website that has these in parentheses, my thought process when I said that in the video was that it would make it easier for you to right click and group stuff, but I didn't realize that if you put stuff in parentheses, it actually groups it for you. You just have to make sure that the group that you put in parentheses, there's actually a group called that. So let me go ahead and command C this, and I'm gonna go right click on any random slide, go to group, get down to the bottom to preferences, because I'm guessing that if I go ahead and add a group called post chorus, let's assign a color to it, that the next time that I go to file import text from clipboard, edit, okay, let's see what happens. So our pre-chorus came in like last time, and now our post chorus came in with our new color and our new grouping. So that is really cool. 
I was recently at an event and we used a MacBook Air to run slides. The screen was super small and it was really hard for the operator to see the lyric slides. I've done this before, but I don't think I've shared this technique. I added my worship macro from my ProPresenter 7 template to this song. This way, when the song was clicked on, the worship look would be applied. Then I went into the looks editor and on the worship look, I applied the theme I set up to use on the main output. That way, any worship slides that left ProPresenter 7 would be forced to pass through this theme filter. In ProPresenter, a look is the last line of defense before the content goes through to the output. So if you assign a theme to the screens from a look, any formatting that is done on the slides of the operator screen no longer affect the output. So then on the song slides of the operator screen, I applied a theme that is in my template in the worship folder called Big Boy. And this theme exists in the template by making a text box fill the screen and then setting the text to scale up and down in the text editor window. Basically, the text gets as big as it can be in the text box, so the operator can easily see the slides. So the output is not affected because the output is being passed through the desired theme in the worship look. Setting up slides in ProPresenter is just the beginning, and I hope that made a lot of sense. The groups feature is a game changer. Song select is a pretty solid integration. Also, check out the reflow editor that I mentioned. If you click on the little button at the top, you can take any song or any sermon notes into the reflow editor, which makes it really easy for formatting and things. Asking for your worship team's best guess for the song's arrangement is definitely gonna help you out, keeping you moving in linear order. Yeah, you can click back into the song or around in the song, but it's idea to stay in linear order as much as possible. At least those people that are looking at the stage display will thank you for taking the time to ask for the arrangement. Set it all up in advance and it'll keep you from jumping around. So that's about it. Thank you for checking out this video. Here is a selection of others you might find interesting. I have a lot of resources here on YouTube to help you learn ProPresenter 7. I also offer one-on-one -on -one training via Zoom. So check out the link in the description to schedule an appointment. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. Bye.